Um, Bill Edget from New, New Brunswick, Canada, tell us a little bit about you and um, what you're doing for the work. Oh, uh, well, um, my, my story began back in 2015 when uh, in my ex separated, uh, we had agreed to uh, be amicable and work things out and we would keep it from the courts and try to you know discuss everything and work it out amongst ourselves. And then I was served with court papers and I was not seeing my children and it has escalated from there. Um, so in the, from between then and now, 2015 till now, we still have not had a trial date. We are divorced, our divorce is finalized, but uh, since the divorce where we've had uh, joint and shared custody, she has continued to make false allegations to police and child protection, which did end up to um, eventually after the third investigation um, did lead to me losing custody on an interim basis until an investigation was conducted. Um, I did get my children back, but uh, it was I, I, it, it opened my eyes that I can't just let this go. I have to I, I have to move forward and try to get the truth out of the situation because I started collecting all the documentation uh, and to look at it, it looked like I was a horrible father and a monster of a, of a former spouse. It, it, it looked terrible, all this uh, paperwork that was created. So um, I've been trying to uh, collect as much information as I can to show how this process begins because um, I was fortunate enough to find two people that were um, experienced with alienation, uh, David Schubert and uh, Keith Marsalek. And one of the things that Keith, uh, that said to me that really stuck with me is that he said, you and I are on the same road. We're just at different points in time. And at that time, I, I had no comprehension of ever getting to where he was because he was there. He was calm. He was lucid. He was talking to me. He was helpful. This is a stranger from across the country, you know, you know, different country across the continent. And um, he's there taking the time to help me and try to make me feel be better and uh, work through what I was going through. So I, uh, I started the New Brunswick page for my own province. So since then, Keith and I have worked, uh, continued to work together and is now part of the Parental Alienation Worldwide Support Group pages. And uh, I work uh, for two provinces. I have New Brunswick and Nova Scotia page for my local areas. That's wonderful. Thank you so much uh, for all that you do because we're, this is not just a phenomenon um, in a particular country. It is, I think we've all discovered that it's a global, global concern. And, um, you know, anything, I would say all of us, all of you all are, you, you know, you, you're these grassroots advocates and you really have to have this undying optimism in the face of no agreement to, to make a difference, to really say, I'm sticking with it. I don't care uh, what they tell me and what's happening. Uh, I'm going to take care, make, make a difference one family at a time. So I thank you for that. Um, you know, we're here today to celebrate Father's Day and to support and empower fathers and their families and perhaps suggest some ideas and, and strategies that have worked for us that may work for others. That's kind of why I'm here. And I think why we're all here. I love it. I, you know, it is. I mean, uh, we can fo focus on the resigned and discouraged and disempowering conversations, um, or we can focus on and celebrate the the wins. And the win for you, Todd, is that you got to spend time with your son. Yes. Um, and you're not giving up up hope on your daughter. Correct. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, how about you? You two, Mar um. Mark and Bill, what's this? Um, how has uh, ha are you able to celebrate Father's Day um, with your family, with your children? Well, thank you. Um, I've been I've been very fortunate through this process. I um I, I found Mr. Marsalak and Dave Schubert relatively early in my journey of this. And like I said, I was, I was traumatized and I was having difficulty uh, dealing with the court system, the divorce, uh, losing the home, uh, taking out all my savings to try and keep the home and keep the lawyers, keep the children in my life. So it was totally draining on me. But throughout, um, I've managed to keep the ch my children in my life. And um, I've done a lot of research. Uh, Ryan Thomas speaks. Um, Amy Baker, uh, Linda Gottlieb, some of the some of the experts that um, have a lot of good information on how to reunite with children. Um, my children were at that stage where they were afraid of my grandparents or afraid of their grandparents, my parents. And when my 
parents would come around, my son would hide behind my leg and hold my leg. So um, I, I did a lot of study and research very quickly to try and overcome that. And um, I've been fortunate enough to uh, have reached them. They have, uh, my children have a great relationship with their grandparents right now. And currently um, I did get my children for Father's Day. They spent the night with me last night and right now they are with their grandparents um, just at their camper, just about five, 10 minutes from my home here. So they're just, I just, I just jumped out of the boat. My dad dropped us off the dock and uh, my daughter was driving the boat. She brought us over, let me get out so I could come and attend this meeting. So I'm, I've been very fortunate to um, have found the information early enough to uh, help intervene in the process to, uh, so that it didn't uh, get too bad. And I was able to counteract a lot of the negative effects that they were going through. I, you know, I agree with you. It's so very important to, to, um, to early intervention, yeah. early intervention, because not only if you, you, you've got to heal yourself and get yourself out of survival, because think about it, survival um, is fear-based. Fear-based is is basically the the non-thinking side of the brain. It's the it's the primitive side of the brain that's um, not making great decisions. Um, but yeah, like it, hitting it early um, because it's not the normal reaction. Like when the children suddenly come over to you and they're um, because you know for your timeshare with them. And they're being belligerent to you. Like in any normal situation, that warrants consequences um, from the parent. However, we know because we researched early that that is falling into prey to the hands of the uh, targeting parent. The parent yeah. wants you to look like the bad guy. They want to provoke the children to, to get you triggered and punishing them and, uh, and ruin the visit, uh, just sabotage the, the visit from, from afar. Uh, but that requires early intervention, early education, and getting yourself into a support system. And um, that's something that um, we've been working on. Uh, so Todd Schulke is one of, on, on our advisory board with Kids Need Both. Um, and we've created this whole community, this collaborative community to for all of your agencies and um, uh, to come together so that we can be of service to these families um, with resources and coaching uh, coach-led groups and uh, curriculum and things like that and programs um, because we get it that this is grass. The only way to shift everything is to get into the grassroots uh, and bring us all together Sadly, in the courts, a lot of times we would go to the courthouses to try to make a difference, but that's like playing whack-a-mole with every new judge that comes. You have to educate every new judge that gets voted on the bench. And a lot of times we would go legislatively, which is really great because there's a lot of good stuff happening uh, in America um, legislatively for equal shared parenting. However, judges, if they don't agree that that legislative order is correct for this family because of their own personal views on how family dynamics should be, a judge can override a legislative um, order. So um, yeah, grassroots. So give, me, give us some ideas on what do you think makes a difference? And you might even bring up what furthers the resignation. So we know what to do and what not to do. Who wants to share? Uh, I'll, I'll jump in here. Um, okay. like I, I, I was very fortunate that I found some people that had a lot of experience in this field um, and they were, able, they, they were able to give me some good advice into what to expect from how the children would react and how to navigate the situation without making it worse and trying to, uh, like I said, it's, uh, once the process begins, you really have to build that reconnection because they've already tried, that, that connection's already been broken, whether it's a little or a lot depending on your situation, there's an, there's something at work there that is interfering with that connection. And it's very easy to make it worse. And if you do the wrong things and you treat the children the wrong way, it will be perceived as you attacking them. And that will further the story they've been told about you, that you are not a good parent. So it's uh, learning to navigate that and uh, be able to deal with what you're going through and still handle it and uh, deal with it properly so so that you can rebuild that relationship. It's, isn't it kind of like you have to, 
I mean, really, that's it's um, it's outwitting, you know, a lot of the things that are going on because it, you know, it is it's it's a mind game. It is. Um, the, the biggest thing I had um, trouble understanding was like the narcissistic personality disorder. And like, if my ex is a narcissist, why would she ever want to have children? And um, when you finally realize that it's their source of feeding her, that it's, it's all about her still, it makes sense. But uh, I, I, that was one of the things that I had most difficulty trying to figure out because it didn't make sense to me. And that's what people need to realize and why the courts and the judges get it wrong is this is these people don't think logically, don't act logically. And trying to figure out the situation in a logical manner doesn't work. Uh, just you, you don't under, if you don't understand what drives these people and how, what they are after, then you can't understand their actions. That's that's the big thing right there. It's uh, learning to understand what you're dealing with and how to cope with it. Yeah, and I have Jennifer is posting. She says, you know, the child is an extension of them. Truly, yes. I mean, it is. Yeah. Um, and therefore, if they're an extension of that, and, and I'll tell you, even in dealing with um, working with parents um, with my co-parenting course, who are not high conflict, um, there's always a little bit of conflict or, or many times, but um, what was I going to say is, oh, you know, Friends I know who are single parents, a lot of times they get so frustrated. Maybe they don't have a social life other than them and the kids. So in the home is kind of that safe space to vent and say what you want to say, but the parent forgets they're the parent. And yeah. when there's a not enough money and the child support didn't come in and you don't know how to pay your electric bill, what do you do? You vent it to this safe space. And you forget, wait a minute, what damage am I doing by saying, uh, venting about my ex, um, you know, to my children. I know that I'm, I follow several groups on social media and, um, you know, there's just so much. I would say to people out there that if you be careful of the groups that you go into that are not moderated, um, that are all about chewing on the, the evilness of another, of, of anything, anything else, a person or, or an organization, because that's, that's resignation in disguise. That is saying, I'm just going to vent about it and, and sit in this sewage because I can't do anything about it. But like, you know, that's why I'm all, I'm all about getting in, get, get yourself a coach, get yourself a conflict coach, divorce coach, divorce, you know, custody coach, whatever you want to call them. But they are just like a sports coach, a coach. They're not going to tell you, they're not going to soothe you and validate you, your, your unhealthy thinking. They're going to make you stronger. And sometimes they're going to tell you what you don't want to hear. Um, so if you're in these plugged in these groups that are just sitting in the sewage, get out. Something I want to point out is, you know, is all of us, but I'll focus on you because today's your day or the, this is father's day. All of you are people that were touched by this and, and were, it was like, and you, you couldn't not advocate. You didn't have a PhD in your background. I assume you didn't have, you, you didn't come into this as a profession. You came to into this because it touched you personally. And you, and I would say that to everybody out there is become an advocate of some sort, be part of the solution. Um, you know, if you have the education behind you, become a family mediator, you know, become a, a guardian ad litem, um, do whatever you can to make a difference in this work and be part of the good guy team. All right. So let's see here. So um, Bill, what's going on? I know you said you've got a couple of, you're, you're leading a couple of groups in two provinces in Canada. How, yeah. has, how have things changed from uh, the beginning of your work to now? Well, in uh, March 1st of uh, this year, Canada has just created new legislation, Bill C-78, uh, and they updated the Divorce Act. 
to recognize course of controlling behaviors. Um, as Mark had said, the false allegations, once they begin, uh, that's when the divorce process deteriorates and uh, it draws it out and it makes it longer and it turns it into a war and a battle um, where it depletes both sides of resources, money, emotional time, uh, the damages the children. It's damaging to everyone involved. And um, I had the opportunity to meet with the Attorney General of the province of New Brunswick. And one of uh, the friends I helped run her page, one of her suggestions to me was that once uh, false allegations began in the, the family court venue, to stop the family court proceedings. and Don't let the allegations influence custody and access. This now becomes a criminal matter. Criminal courts, the criminal courts aren't as burdened as the family courts. They're not overworked. And one, there's, there's two reasons why it should move to the criminal court instead of staying in the family court. You've got an allegations of abuse, which is a criminal offense. So either one, it's true. You know, that's one possibility. It could be true. Real allegations of abuse, criminal offense. Two, it could be false. Still a criminal offense. And someone could be trying to use that to manipulate the system to their advantage to get custody and access, which is going to make the situation so much worse in the long run for the, everyone involved. It's very and good. I, um, it's a good point. I, and I also get that sometimes courts are hesitant if there's um, child abuse allegations or, or something that could could shift it into the juvenile court or the or um, or the criminal court. A lot of times, judges are hesitant to to to, to send it to a different a different uh, court. Well, the, some of these issues need to be dealt with because, in my case, I've been the subject of three investigations by child protection. I've been investigated by municipal police department, and I've been investigated by the RCMP, which is kind of a federal or state. With, in the United States, a government agency, um, policing agency. So out of all these investigations and everyone who has investigated me for all these allegations, there has been no one to corroborate any of the statements made against me except my ex's boyfriend, which they provided. They, I've got a DVD of the statement he made to the police, and uh, that's the only corroborated evidence that they had. And I was arrested for her criminal harassment, uh, for harassing both him and her. And when he testified at court, he testified during that period for which I was arrested for harassing him, that him and I had no contact. So that's this just, there's no standard given uh, in two of the decisions against me by judges. Uh, one judge, when he granted a peace bond against me, he said, there are no requirements that need to be met. The only thing that needs to be satisfied is for me to believe that she is fearful of this man. I believe she's fearful. Peace bond granted one year. Um, that was a that was a criminal peace bond that was brought against me, and uh, uh, that was one of the tools used to have me arrested. And I had a criminal trial for breach of undertaking, for breaching that peace bond, for having a third party call to pick up my children from me when it was my custody and access time. I was arrested for that, had to go to a criminal trial. Uh, I was found not guilty, but again, the criminal harassment judge, criminal harassment charges were dropped against me because of insufficient evidence, but they did move forward with the criminal charges for breach of undertaking that were placed on me because of the alleged criminal harassment that they couldn't move forward with because of insufficient evidence. Um, and again, when it came to uh, the third time I was investigated by child protection and the false allegations, uh, the judge said he was gonna err on the side of caution and grant my ex sole custody of the children until the completion of the investigation by the RCMP and child protection. Um, we made it back to court, provided evidence that both the RCMP and Child Protection had uh, exonerated me of any wrongdoing, yet he still did not uh, return custody of the children to me. He said, we will continue on an interim basis. You will have access for this schedule. We'll return in another month or two and proceed from there. So I lost custody of my children because someone picked up the phone and made a false report to the RCMP, which the RCMP officer came to meet with me. I have that whole interaction on video. and. Instead of taking a report from me, the RCMP officer left and called child protection and passed on all the information that my ex had given to him, because I also did get the files from child protection that didn't take report. And again, these are criminal matters, but there have been no penalties for her for. Well, uh, the, here's the thing, and I've seen this, I've seen judges do this before, is 
um, in an abundance of caution, they think that, okay, so a, a restraining order, uh, a protective order um, that keeps everybody on their side of the fence, no mm -hmm. communication is the right thing. And that might be fine if they're not children involved, but they, but uh, judges, and I know that they have a lot of these conferences and, you know, like continuing education, just like any profession. Um, but the judges really need to get the impact of their choices, because if they continue to hold up a restraining order, um, it easily be used um, as a tactic, a, a weapon. It can also be used a tool to, pre to prevent access to the children. So judges really have to pay attention to the impact of their orders and, and how it can be a slippery slope because they just, if they, they, they have so many cases that they're like, okay, yeah, continue that restraining order, continue that, continue that, continue that. And they have no idea the, fa the destruction they're doing to the families. Um, that, was another, that was another one of my suggestions when I got to meet with the attorney general was in any cases like this where the children are involved in allegations of abuse, they should have someone oversee the court case to observe the parents try to determine which parent because you got two people there telling opposing stories and until you know which one is telling the truth you're going to continue to make wrong decisions in the case and make the things worse they need someone that can look at the people and understand uh, people with uh, pathology or narcissistic personality disorder borderline personality disorder wh whichever thing that may be driving their behaviors to be able to recognize the indicators and how they express themselves and express their information to the court. Once you see it, you can't unsee it, but you need qualified professionals to recognize that. And that's what they're missing in the courts. Uh, so if you do have a, a couple that's choosing to, to split and they're trying to do it amicably, you know, there's a lot of distrust in, in the midst of like divorce, especially when there's children and assets involved. There's, oh my God, you know, am I going to, um, they're gonna, there's just so much um, fear around it. However, in the state of Florida, an attorney, a, a couple can't go in and say, hey, attorney, I want you to figure out our divorce and we want you to be the one attorney. The attorney, the rule in the state of Florida is I've got to represent one against the other. In and court I, though, in court. in court, you can have an attorney advise you outside the outside exactly yeah but what but the the attorney, attorney of record in court has yes. to choose a side against a side so yeah. there you, again you're you're fur, further perpetuating that that um battle mentality that battle yeah. that's that's that that war mentality now i do know that you know there's mediation centered uh divorce and um you know and separation um, which is the closest to, and especially since if, an, if a mediator is an attorney, that at least gives you a little bit of like legal distinctions, but still um, they've just definitely set it up where, you know, unless you want to end up on the losing end, you better hire yourself a, a big badass attorney that's, um, yeah, yeah. you know, um, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. And it doesn't have to be that way. Absolutely. Uh, oh, and here's one. Somebody says um, the choice between bankruptcy and our children is a horrible choice. Choice. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, so we need to stop taking the bait. You know, and I get that there's emotions involved. I, I get that there's betrayal involved. There's there's so many um, you know feelings swirling around that relationship, and um, you know, unfortunately, pa parent a parent will take the the weapon that they have at their disposal that that uh, stabs the knife deeper, and that's sadly the children. Yeah, um, and it should. And, and I mean, and, and I'll tell you, if you take a, if you set aside, this person is evil. This person's narcissist. This let's 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 take away the labels and take away the resignation, and we and and there was a time when you didn't see this person as evil and stuff. And I get that some people are just really good at battle, you know, battle mode. Um, that doesn't serve anybody. 
So when we set that aside, what can we do? Um, we can we can fight for the rights of the children. Truly, we're you know that's the goal is um, being the advocate for the children, and the children having a, being whole and complete, so that they're not going to pass along this generational trauma. And you're right, Angelina Julie, she had, there's a history. She did not have a good relationship with her mother that validated her. And it, it, it's, we're not going to call Angelina evil. She may be doing evil things in our opinion, but she, that being said, she's a product of her environment, a product of her childhood. Yeah. One other thing about, you know, false, the popularity of false allegation restraining orders, which um, it, some people call it the silver bullet technique because it is so popular. And there are judges in the states that uh, pride themselves on the number of restraining orders. And you're talking tens of thousands during a, a judicial career. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you know, they, 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 and, and they've served in family court. And um, there's something, you know, called judi judicial immunity. So, you know, on the one hand, you know, you're, you're doing right by your profession, uh, by, you know, using false allegation restraining orders, you're avoiding a PR disaster. If you, you know, if they're in this, the, the outside case where the, the, there is danger, and there's a problem, and it isn't false. And then, you know, I, there's really nothing, even, even if you make a mistake with a false allegation restraining order, there's no consequences. You can never be sued. Uh, the judge is fully, is completely immune from any, any liability for those decisions. And that's kind of a subtle part of the, you know, the issue too within the court. That's right. So, uh, so we have a comment from someone and they said, um, and they brought up the case of John Mast. I think we all heard about John Mast getting yeah. gunned down by his father-in-law. I mean, it's an extreme case of an, an animosity level becoming so intent on destruction. Um, and sadly, today is uh, the children's first Father's Day without him alive. And, um, and that's where it can lead to, because I fully believe that that father-in-law thought he was implementing justice um uh but and and all of us know oh my god how could a father-in-law do this to his grandchildren shared, shared persecutory delusion it is it's, it's like <laughs> but Frightening. but Frightening. it's get it in the early stages get yourself some help get yourself plugged into a support group not a um a soup of sewage that just validates all the resignation it's super important to i always tell people like before you hire a um an attorney hire a a coach because not only are they going to be cheaper they're going to show you the cheapest route and they're going to tell you when you need that attorney um but, uh, and which is one of the reasons that we, uh, along with Todd on the team uh, with Kids Need Both, we've created this platform. And I, and I definitely want um, uh, Bill and Mark for you guys to be plugged into this uh, um, community called Hope for Families. Um, and we're creating a movement. We are creating a movement to shift the conversation and bring healing to hurting families. 100%, 100%. Anything to help our children, I am there. Yeah, yeah. we have, um, Todd, I don't know if you want to say something about the, 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 um, the, I say it's a platform, but it's really a community. It's really a movement. Um, we've been working with programmers for a year now to develop a learning management system for um, those of you professionals who've created courses uh, also these, um, those of you professionals or, you know, not just the professionals, the advocates that are leading, uh, live programs and live, uh, live groups to make a difference. And, um, we're trying to also be the one that promotes all of your events out into the other social media platforms so that, um, we all can win. Yeah. So. Thank you. One thing that's kind of, uh, I think, unique about, I think we, our 
thinking about the platform ha has evolved over the past year is the idea that, well, uh, you know, many of us like Mark, you'd mentioned, and I totally agree with you that, uh, you know, the solutions have to be outside the, the current system, you know, the, the adversarial system, um, you know, trying to change that is a yeoman's job. Um, you know, what can we do outside the system? Um, the uh, professionals on the platform and that we're, um, that we're interacting with are both, you know, are playing, you know, some are, uh, are, are like-minded in that sense. Others are, you know, trying to uh, improve things within the court system. I mean, it's not exclusive in that sense, but um, by seeing what works and what doesn't work and by getting case studies of, you know, positive results coming from, you know, uh, the use of cooperative techniques instead of the combative methods, Correct. like false allegation restraining orders is one of them and child support and uh, unequal parenting. I mean, those are the three, you know, some of the big uh, techniques that are used in adversarial court. Uh, or family court, um, you know, will uh, you know will be as as Danica says, it's a movement, you know, and that's yeah. part of. Not everybody's going to be on the same page, it's like, like you were saying, Bill. You know, even with parental alienation, you know, we're at each at different stages. Some of us have yeah. adult children that are, you know, some of us have you know three year olds, four year olds, and and it's a, it, you know, it's the same thing, but we're at different stages. And I think that uh, a lot of the professionals in this industry. Uh, in and around this industry, you know, some are, are leading, are, you know, at the forefront of the movement and others, you know, still need proof, you know, or whatever, you know, they, they, they're, they're uh, interested, um, but are not completely, uh, you know, bought off on it. And so it's a, it's an open platform. And I think that's yeah. important. I, the, the goal is, is we all, we all can do something. We mm -hmm. all can do something to make a difference. And I get that there's a lot of um, advocates who were, you know, really uh, putting everything, their money, their time, their everything into this movement. And, um, and our goal is you shouldn't be poor, you shouldn't grow, get, go broke doing the right thing. Right. Um, to try to make a difference for families and stuff like that. Not that it's not a platform. Obviously, it's not a platform to make all these professionals wealthy. That's not the agenda. The agenda is let's work smarter by uniting together. 100%. Well, this is this is well, like you mentioned with regards to healing. Um, that's why I'm also doing retreats. I do believe that healing is a, a massive process and part of what we're trying to achieve. It's not just about dealing with things on your own, but having the right support um, and, and finding the right healing process uh, around what we're trying to achieve as well. That's right. Well, it is three minutes after the hour. I know that I'm sure, I don't know what time it is over in the UK, but I know it's not this time. <laughs> and I thank you for whatever it took for you to get here on Father's Day. And same with you, Bill. Thank you so much. And Todd, thank you for, having me. for what it took to. Uh, thank you. All right. All right. And that's all we have. I, if you uh, have any questions, make, make some comments in wherever it is that you are watching our, um, our stream. And um, of course, we're always available through an instant message or so. I'm sure you can find us somewhere on the, on the <laughs> internet somewhere. All right. Have a wonderful day, um, rest of your day, and uh, happy Father's Day to everyone. Thank you. Happy Father's Day, guys. Yeah, happy you too. Day. See you later, guys. Thank you.